Hello again, we are here with another video from LLM0200 series. In this video, I'm going to focus on RAG Retrieval Augmented Generation and I'm going to explain RAG. And then we are going to design a chatbot which is called RAG GPT. So this chatbot is going to have multiple functionalities, but RAG is going to be the main uh, side of our, our chatbot. For the chatbot, I'm going to use four different libraries. First is Gradio uh, that I'm going to use for designing the user interface. From OpenAI, I'm going to use the embedding model and GPT 3.5 as our language model. And finally, I'm going to use Langchain and Chroma for designing the RAG side of our chatbot. So first, I'm going to show you uh, a demo of our chatbot. And then I'm going to quickly go through the GitHub repository and uh, show you how you can uh, execute the, the code yourself. And I will explain uh, some of the main techniques that are uh, proposed uh, by Llama Index and uh, Langchain for designing your RAG system. These are the three techniques that I found very interesting. And then I will start the, uh, explaining the, the project itself and how to develop that project step by step by using the project schema. So this is the chatbot that we are going to design in this video. As you can see, there are multiple settings here, but I mentioned that this chatbot is going to have three main functionalities. First is, uh, is that the chatbot is able to connect with a vector database that we prepared in advance. And that vector database contains some of our documents. It can be your organization document, your company's document, etc. And we want to have Q&A with our documents. Then is uh, the second feature is we can also upload a document while we are chatting with the chatbot. And finally, so the third feature is not technically a RAG feature, but I thought this is a nice addition to this chatbot, uh, which is we can pass a document no matter how many pages are in that document. And the chatbot is able to go through the whole PDF and give us a nice summary from the PDF file. So let's see how this chatbot works. There are three documents that I've already prepared. One of them is uh, the paper for the clip model. Uh, the other one is a paper for vision transformer. And finally, there is, a, uh, there is a third document that is a lecture from Sam Altman about startups. So let's first ask one of the questions that uh, came up in the PDF for Sam Altman uh, uh, lecture. So if I just simply submit that question, we can see that our chatbot is able to connect with our uh, vector database and get uh, retrieved uh, and retrieve some of the relevant contents related to our question and finally provide us with a nice answer uh, to the question. And on the left, we can see the retrieved contents, the most relevant contents to our question. And actually, if I also open the PDF, I can see the PDF here and I can scroll down, go through the PDF by myself if I need more information. So let's ask actually another question. Uh, for example, how does Vision Transformer interpret images? So now we are asking question about a different PDF file. The Vision Transformer interpret images by applying a pure uh, transformer directly to sequence of image patches. So it was able again to exactly uh, find the answer to our question. And again, we are seeing the relevant uh, contents to the question itself, and then our language model was able to pick up the answer and provide us with the exact answer. So let's change the functionality of our chatbot. What I want to do is I want to upload a PDF right now as we are chatting with the chatbot and see how we can have Q&A with our new document. So I've selected two documents. Uh, one of them is the paper attention is all you need. And finally, I have, a, uh, I have a PDF file that contains three different stories, uh, fic fictional stories uh, about a bee, a wolf, and a fish. So let's pass the stories to our chatbot. So the, documents, the document is now ready and we can ask our questions. If I ask Chris Fred, so Fred is one of the fi uh, fictional characters in our stories. And our chatbot again is going to search over the vector database and find out that Fred is a small redfish who lived in a cozy uh, coral reef with his loving family. So it again provided us with the answer from the document that we just uploaded uh, here. 
And finally, the last feature, which I really like this feature actually, and again, as I said, this is not a rag, uh, let's say technique, but this is something that I've always wanted for myself, is if I pass a PDF to our chatbot, no matter how many pages are in that PDF, the chatbot is able to go through the whole PDF and give us a nice summary. So uh, that paper has over 10 pages, I think 15. And let's see how our chatbot is able to provide us with the summary of the whole PDF, the whole uh, paper. So it starts by an introduction. The paper introduces a new uh, network ar architecture called Transformer. And then it also provides us with some of the results, some part about the discussion. The paper discusses the performance of different variations of Transformer architecture. And finally, uh, I mean, it's also giving us uh, the results show that Transformer model achieved the state-of-the-art performance and uh, it finally is saying the paper also indicates a list of references, related research papers, etc. So it shows that actually our chatbot was able to successfully go through the whole document and provide us with a nice summary uh, with the most uh, important part, like piece of information and uh, this is something that I really like and I think it's going to be a very useful feature for this chatbot. So this is a summary of uh, the chatbot itself and a short demo of how the chatbot can work. And actually you can also play around with the temperature for the language model and uh, see how it can affect the performance of the model. However, when we are designing a rack system, my strong suggestion is to use temperature as zero because what we want is precise answers and the most accurate answers, which I think uh, a zero temperature uh, is, is the best choice for us. So this is the GitHub repository. If you go into the repository for LLM0200, you will see RAG GPT uh, uh, folder. And if you come into RAG GPT, you will find the explanation of the project, uh, all the uh, functionalities uh, that I just showed you, along with the screenshot of the project and the project schema. This is the schema that we are going to use today for uh, developing our project. Then you will see some of the like some information that uh, I think uh, it's necessary. Like uh, this project needs uh, to uh, needs uh, if you want to execute the project, there are two commands that you have to execute. Uh, one command is going to execute serve.py, and the other one is going to execute uh, the app itself. I will explain what is serve.py, and I will explain the app uh, while we are developing the project and. Uh, I just want to give, give you an idea of the GitHub repository here. And also you can find the key libraries along with the versions that I'm using here. So you can uh, easily uh, execute the code by yourself. So first I want to explain what is RAG in general. RAG has three main steps. The first step of a RAG system is preparing your database. That's the first step. It is not uh, uh, related to, it, it can be totally offline and you don't necessarily need to do it while you're chatting with the, with the chatbot. However, our model, as you saw, uh, has both uh, capabilities to both work with a vector database that was already uh, processed along with the data, vector database that we just created while we were chatting. But this is the first step in any RAG system to prepare your vector database. And this first step includes uh, some key steps by itself, which is of course loading your documents, cleaning your documents if necessary, chunking the documents. So I will show you what chunking means in a moment, like in the next slide. And then you're going to get the, uh, pass the chunks to, a to an embedding model and get the embeddings. And finally, you are going to create a vector database. This is the first phase of a RAG system. Then, after we have the vector database, what we want is if we have a query, how can we search over our database and find out the most relevant content to that query? So that's what we are calling content retrieval. Let's say we have a query. What we do is we pass that query to an embedding model and we get the queries embedding. And then we apply a search with that query, like the embedding version of the query on our vector database. So no matter what technique we are using, we are going to get a score based on the, our search of the query over each chunk. And what we are going to do at the end is to retrieve the top K chunks that are 
uh, that had the, mo the highest score uh, for our search and they are the most relevant contents to our query. So as I showed you here in the chatbot, if I open up the left side, you can see right now I'm retrieving three contents, which are the most relevant contents to the user's query, which was who is Fred in this case. And finally, we have the synthesis part. So here is when the large language model come into, come into, the, uh, come into the game. So what we want to do is we want to prepare an input for our language model. That input includes the language model instruction. It also includes all the retrieved contents, depending on how many content you want to pass to your language model. This is something that you will choose based on your needs and your project's requirements. And finally, we want to also have the user's query. So these are the three main components that a language model need in order to provide you with the right answer, with the, pre with the precise answer to your question. However, we can also introduce a fourth element, which is chat history. And this is something that you might want to pass to a language model or you don't, depending again on your needs and your project's requirements. But we are going to actually introduce a chat history uh, in RAG GPT today. And this is uh, the input that we will uh, prepare for our language model. And finally, what we will get is the response from the language model. This is something that we just saw uh, in the demo of the chatbot. In the next step, as I said, I'm going to introduce three well-known techniques in the RAG world. I'm going to call them as they were called by the Llama Index team. Uh, so they are calling a conventional RAG technique, which was uh, proposed by Langchain uh, as a basic RAG. And then they are uh, proposing sentence ret retrieval and also auto-merging retrieval. So let's see what do they mean. First, let's see how the conventional method or the basic RAG works. If I have a document, and the first step again is to prepare this document. And we are just going to focus on that side. That's where the main difference uh, appears. So if I chunk my documents, let's say into two chunks, what Langchain offered was, okay, so let's have these two chunks. And also, you know what? Let's have a uh, overlap for our chunks. So each chunk, not only is going to contain some part of a text that it should contain, but also it's going to contain some part from the previous chunk. So this is how they try to somehow keep uh, the performance smooth and provide some more content for the model in case two chunks that are somehow related are triggered and we are going to pro uh, provide both of them to the model. The model is going to now understand uh, somehow the relation between those chunks. And this is the the way that we are going to also design RAG GPT today. They are like in Llama Index presentation, they are calling it basic RAG. But actually, if you implement this technique, you are going to see that this is a very powerful technique. Uh, I've designed system with GPT-4 and this technique. And I should say that I didn't even have the need to explore more and to explore uh, other techniques to, to improve my system because it was just perfect. Like if you have nice, clean documents, and if you uh, implement this technique, you are going to see that it is a very powerful one. So what does sentence retrieval mean and what is the difference between this one, uh, this technique and the previous one? So for simplicity, I'm now going to consider our chunks as simply sentences. So my point is I'm going to take each sentence as a separate chunk. Let's say I have a question and after I search my question over my database, my search result is going to provide me with this answer as the one with the highest score. What sentence retrieval suggests is when you want to pass this content uh, to your language model, we are not going to just pass that a specific sentence, but what we are going to pass is actually this part. So we are going to include some of the sentences uh, which belong like uh, some of the earlier sentences compared to this one and some sentences uh, that appeared after the one that we just retrieved. So this is how they are offering to provide the content for the large language model. The whole concept is we provide uh, content for our large language model in a way that it is able to extract the most relevant information and provide us with a better answer at the end. And finally, they are offering auto-merging retrievals. So this is a technique that I found it actually very interesting and 
this is something that I definitely would like to explore myself. So what they are offering is, let's say we have a document and we want to chunk it. The way that we are going to chunk our document is, again, we are going to uh, divide it into multiple chunks. But now each chunk, let's call them child nodes, each child node is going to somehow have a connection with some other child nodes and we are going to consider all of them in a bigger node called parent node. So there are two scenarios that can happen. Let's say we have a query and we do a search on our vector database. And let's say that search only triggers child node one along with some other child, child nodes from some other documents. So that's okay. That's something, it's very similar to the first rack system, uh, the basic rack that we just described. But what if we have a query and that query triggers child node one, child node three, and child node four? So now is the inter interesting part. We know that there is a parent node that contains these three childs along with a fourth child that is missing in our, in our retrieved content. So actually what they are suggesting is, you know what, now that you want to pass these to a language model, it is better to also include child node 2, the missing child, to the language model because most definitely it's going to add more content and it's going to make it much easier for the language model to grasp the content, to grasp, uh, to grasp the meaning behind all those chunks and to provide the user with a more accurate result. So this is auto-merging retrievals. And as I said, what I'm going to implement today is that conventional RAG or the one that was offered initially by Langchain. As, uh, and as we can see, that by itself is a very powerful method. However, I just wanted to uh, explain you these two uh, methods uh, just uh, so you know and you can think which one might be your best choice depending on, again, your uh, requirements and your project needs. This is the project schema of uh, RAG GPT. So this is what we are going to design today. I'm going to divide it into multiple uh, steps so it is easier for us to go through the project and uh, it is also easier uh, to implement it if we just see it in different pieces. The first piece is going to be, as I said, data preparation, data ingestion side, and it is totally uh, separate from the chatbot. So we are going to design a pipeline that takes our documents and process them and creates the vector database for us. So then we can point our chatbot to that vector database and uh, ask our questions from the vector database. However, as I said, this technique, I'm also going to include it uh, in the chatbot itself. So while we are chatting with the chatbot, we have the option to upload a document and to create a vector database while we are chatting and to ask questions from the new document. So these two have actually everything uh, in common, like all the steps are similar. However, the only difference is where the documents are coming from. The first one, are, uh, the first one is our clean, nice company documents, organization documents. The second one is a document that I personally just want to ask questions uh, on, the, on the fly while, we are, while I'm chatting with the chatbot. After we prepared the vector database, what we need is a chatbot that is able to take our question, search on vector database, retrieve some content, and finally pass everything to the chatbot. So these are the steps that we are going to uh, implement for, uh, for the RAG system, let's say, to be able to ask questions from our vector database. I'm going to ask a question. My question is going to pass to embedding model then it's going to perform a vector search on my vector database. Then some uh, contents will be retrieved. I'm going to prepare an input for my language model, which includes the model instruction, the retrieved content, my question, and finally, uh, a chat uh, history, a memory, uh, so the model can just uh, provide a, a better user experience for us at the end. And finally, the fourth piece is the summarization part. So the way that I designed it is you pass a PDF to your chatbot. What is happening here is that now we are going to divide the PDF for each page. Like we, we will have a list 
and the list will contain each page of our PDF file. Then we are going to pass each page to a GPT model that is being instructed to just give us a summary of that page. Give us a summary while keeping all the key information. Then we are going to keep all the summaries in another list, which is going to be the input of our final GPT model. So the second GPT model here is going to see all those summaries and it is instructed to check all those summaries. And finally, what it does is it provides us with a final summary, a summary of all summaries that gives us the best understanding of that PDF and what it does. So this is how I designed this fourth piece. However, this is not flawless. It doesn't work if you pass a 2000 page PDF to it. So if you want to break this system, it is very easy to break it. And that was not uh, my intention to design a system which is flawless and can, uh, can work in any scenarios. My main goal is first to provide something that is useful. So in my case, the PDFs that I'm working with are not above 50 pages. They are mostly papers that I'm going to read. And sometimes I'm just interested to see uh, a nice short summary of the whole paper to see if I'm interested to go deeper and uh, go through each page or do I just want to pass? But if you decide to make this bigger and use larger PDFs or documents, there are two main uh, bar barriers that you have to overcome. The first one is the context length of the second GPT model. So if you have a PDF that, is, uh, that has 2000 pages, this summary is going to be a summary of each page and it is going to be 2000 summaries at the end. And it's not going to fit in your second model. So, I mean, just thinking right now, you, what you might need is probably a, a loop that starts summarizing uh, those pages and probably then a chunk of pages. Uh, so eventually you have a final list, which is uh, just long enough that you can pass it to the second GPT model. But anyway, you have to come up with a, with a different solution. The second issue that you, uh, that you will face is the number of API call, calls that you can uh, do per minute. So again, if you have 2000 pages and you want to do 2000 API calls, you have to check whether you, ha you have the permission or you don't, depending on what language model uh, you are using. So these are the two main challenges that you will have. But as I said, I just passed a 15 page PDF uh, and it was able to provide me with an introduction uh, what the, PP, the paper accomplished and finally some of the discussion and the results section. So this is perfect for me and this is working right now. However, if you want to improve it, these are the two things that you have to consider. So I just want to start explaining the whole project. But before that, let me uh, first show you the project structure and then I will uh, start explaining the project. So this is the project structure. If you open it up, you will see a config folder that has uh, app config yam file. So in this folder, uh, what I will have is all the configs that my project uses. As I said, uh, you will have access uh, to the number of retrieved contents. You will have uh, uh, you will you will be able to change the chunk size, the chunk overlap size. You will be able to change the temperature of the uh, second or third uh, language models. If you remember, so we have three GPT models in our system. And for this one, I'm going to provide a setting in the chatbot itself. So you are able to change the temperature. But for, for these two, I just put them in the config folder uh, in the config yam file because eventually what I'm going to use is temperature equal to zero for all of them. I have the system roles that you can play around with them and some other configs that we will go through them while we are developing the project. Then I have a data folder. In data folder, I will have docs folder, which contains three PDFs, as I said earlier, clip a paper, vision transformer paper, and, even, and finally how to start a startup, a lecture by Sam Altman. So I'm going to prepare these three documents in our vector database. So our model has access to this processed vector database so we can have Q&A with, uh, with these documents. 
Then there is a second folder called docs2. So this one contains two PDFs that I'm going to use as my examples. One of them I'm going to upload it uh, while I'm designing the chatbot, uh, while I'm chatting with the chatbot. And the third one I'm going to use it for a summary, uh, to get a summary from the chatbot. In the data folder, you will have a vector database folder. This folder is going to be created automatically. And what it contains is a processed folder and uh, an uploaded folder. So process folder contains the vector database from this one, these, fo uh, these files, and uploaded one is going to contain a vector database from whatever PDF that you just uh, give to your model while you are using it. Then I have images, which I will skip it. It's just some images for readme file. Then we have the source folder. So in the source folder, we have all our codes. There are three uh, modules that you will uh, use for executing the chatbot. This is something that I just want to use for the video, then I will remove it uh, when I want to uh, update the GitHub repository. And then we have utils, which contains our codes for the backend of our chatbot. So as you can see, there are a lot of codes involved in this uh, project. My goal is not to actually sit and write uh, the codes from scratch. My goal is to take each piece of the schema and to walk you through that part of the project and explain each piece in detail so you then have a very good understanding of how this project was designed, developed, and you can modify it uh, and uh, adjust it based on your needs. So the first part that I'm going to explain is the data ingestion part, the part that we are going to process our offline documents and prepare a vector database for our system. So let's see how it works. I just removed the vector database in the data folder uh, so we can recreate it uh, while we are uh, trying to uh, execute that part of the code. So let me actually open up a notebook so I can explain uh, what is happening. So what I need for this part is, again, if you uh, remember the second slide, I said the first step is data ingestion. And what I need uh, is first to load the documents. So I need a function that load documents for me. Then what I need is a function that chunks the loaded documents. So this is the second function that I need. The third function that I need is depending on, on how you're designing your uh, RAG system is to get the embedding of those chunk files, uh, chunk uh, documents. So I need get the embeddings. And finally, what I need is a fourth function that creates a vector database and save the vector database somewhere for me. So create and save the vector database. So this is what we are going to implement for this first part of the project. Before I move on, I have to just explain one more thing. So the way that a vector database work is I just provided you with a simplified version of a vector database. So you just have a good understanding of what is happening in that vector database is that when we have a chunk, so these texts are referring to our chunks. When we have a chunk and we pass it to, a, to the embedding model and we get the embedding, what we want to store in our vector database is not only the embeddings, but also the corresponding chunk in the embedding, in the vector database. So it means that if I have the embedding of a chunk, I have the text next to it. So while I'm doing the search on my query, I'm going to search over the vector database, uh, over the embeddings. And I explain in, in a different video why we are doing it and uh, how a vector search uh, can actually preserve the semantic relationship within a sentence or a paragraph or a piece of text. And if you are not familiar with the concept, this is a very fundamental concept that we are going to use for designing our RAG system. So I strongly recommend you to watch that video. This is a short video. I just explained the embedding side of the project. But what we want to do is we want to search over the, uh, over the embeddings, but eventually what we want to retrieve here is actually these texts side of 
uh, our vector database. Why? Because we want to pass it to a language model and our language models, they understand text, they don't understand uh, embeddings. So what I'm going to receive is actually the corresponding text to the embeddings which got the highest score based on my search result. So this is just a short uh, description of a vector database. So these are the four, four steps that I want to implement for creating that vector database. And if you go into the utils folder and if you open prepare vector DB, what you will see is a class called prepare vector database. And this class is exactly implementing these steps. So what this class is receiving uh, is first the data directory, which is this folder. So you can just copy paste your personal documents and use them for the chatbot. Then it also receives a persist directory, uh, which is the directory where the vector database is going to be created. Then we have the embedding model, the chunk size and the chunk overlap. And if you check the config here, you will have access to the chunk size, chunk overlap, and also if you're using a different embedding model, you can define it here. Then it creates the text splitter. So text splitter is something that Langchain uses for creating those chunks. And they are offering multiple, like different uh, text splitters. You can see uh, one is called character text splitter, the other one token text splitter, etc. But the one that I'm going to use for this project is recursive character text splitter is, is the one that I used and I think it's uh, working just fine. And I, I, I will use this one for this, uh, for this chatbot. Then I also have my embedding model. So this is the first function as uh, we discussed. This function works in two different ways. So what I want is first this part, the blue part, so I have some offline documents and I want to create the chunk and I want to create the vector database. I also want the second part, which is while I'm chatting with the chatbot, if a user uploads a document, what I'm going to receive is in Gradio is the directory, the full directory of that document. So I just simply get the directory of the uploaded documents. It can be one or more than one document. And I'm going to chunk them, chunk them and go through the same exact steps that we are going to have for the offline documents. So the only difference in this function is the way that it's going to receive the document directory. If I just provide the directory and point it to our data folder, it is going to create a vector database so we can use immediately when we open the chatbot. And if I upload a document while I am chatting with the chatbot, it gets the directory, it creates the, uh, the chunks, and it goes through uh, all the steps that we want to create a new vector database for us. So this is the second function. As I explained, chunk documents, what it does is it creates the chunked documents from our PDF files. So before I move on, let me actually show you how that looks like. So I have a test uh, notebook here. Again, this one is also not going to be included in the repository. This is just something that I will use for the video. But what I want to show you is the output of this function and this function. How do they look like? So both of them are going to give us a list of documents. The first function is going to give us a list of documents, which is something like this. So if I have a document, let's say in this case, two pages, I'm going to get a list and each page is going to have its own uh, piece. So if I just simply uh, print the first element in my list, I'm going to have this tuple here. And that by itself has two components. I have the page content. And if I print in, I will get the text from that specific page. And I will also have a metadata, which contains the page number and also the source, which is the directory of that document. So I'm going to use these, the page content to create the chunks. And I'm going to use metadata for providing the reference and all those things on the sidebar just to provide the reference and make it interactive for the user so it can also uh, access the PDF file. 
So I'm going to get a list of docs. We just saw how it looks. And then I'm going to chunk it. The chunks are going to exactly look the same. Uh, but the only difference is uh, now our documents actually is not going to be two pages. In that case, it's going to be more than two depending on the chunk size and the chunk overlap. And finally, what I'm going to do here is to create the vector database. So one step that is missing here is passing our chunks to an embedding model. And it is happening behind the scenes. Langchain just made it easy for us. So if we just pass our embedding model and the directory where we want our vector database to be created along with the chunk documents, it is going to create it and save the vector database for us automatically. So if you decide to design your own RAG system using a different library or a customized ver version of a RAG system, that's the step that you have to take. Pass your chunks to an embedding model, create the embeddings, and finally create a vector database that contains the embeddings along, uh, along with the corresponding text and just save it somewhere on the cloud or on your uh, local PC. Finally, I'm going to save the vector database and along the way, I'm going to also print some useful information for us to see what is happening. So the number of loaded documents, number of pages, and then the number of chunks, etc. So this is the first part of the project that you have to execute before running the chatbot. This is the vector database that needs to be created. So the chatbot has access somewhere to some documents. So you can start chatting if you don't want to upload a document or you don't want to summarize a document. And for executing this class here, what you need to execute is this module here. This module is just simply instantiate that class and uh, create the vector database and save it somewhere. So let's see how it works. If I just execute this class, now our vector, vector database uh, was created. You can see a folder was added here in the processed folder, subfolder. And here are some of the information that we printed. We just loaded three documents. These are the three PDFs here. Total number of pages were 83, all the PDFs together. Then we chunk the PDFs using this config here. So our chunk was, our chunk size was 1,500 and the chunk overlap was 500. So the number of chunks was 341. And finally, we just uh, created and saved our vector database. Now our chatbot is ready to chat with our documents. So I just explained this part of the project this part is exactly the same. The only difference is I'm going to just uh, upload the documents and Gradio is going to provide me with the directory to the uh, documents that we want to uh, process. Then the next step is to create a pipeline that enables us to chat with our vector database. So I will go through the pipeline first quickly, which is I want to have a query that query needs to be uh, passed to an embedding model. Then I want to perform a vector search. Then from the vector search, I want to retrieve some contents. I want to prepare an input for my language model, which contains the retrieved contents. Actually, in this step, I'm going to skip the memory side. I just want to simplify it. So it's going to contain retrieved content, model instruction, and my query. Then we expect to see the result from the model. So for designing this part, before I design it on Gradio, what I want to do is first to design it uh, in an interactive way uh, with the terminal. So I just want to create that whole pipeline, but I want to execute it on the terminal. So what I need here is actually, let me open a markdown. So first, I need to have access to a large language model before anything to an LLM and an embedding model. So you have to if you're using OpenAI, you have to load all your, all your credentials. I need to have access to the directory of the vector database. I need to get the user's query. Then I have to get the embedding. Then I have to perform a search using the 
uh, queries actually embedding and the vector database. Then I will retrieve some content. Again, this is uh, a config that you can define here. So right now I'm retrieving the top uh, content with the highest score uh, based on my search result. And then I'm going to prepare the model input, which is the query plus the retrieved content plus the model instruction. And the instruction of that model is here. So this is the instruction that I uh, designed for this uh, chatbot. This is a very important part of your chatbot. You probably need to massage it a little bit to get the best performance out of it, depending on your language model and your use case. But right now this works just fine for us. So I'm saying, telling the model that you're a chatbot, you receive a prompt that includes a chat history. We are skipping it for, the, for this part. Then the retrieved content from the vector database uh, based on the user's question and the source. Your task is to respond to the user's new question using the information from the vector database without relying on your own knowledge. So this is a typical way that we design RAG systems. We don't necessarily want GPT models or any language model that you're using to use its own knowledge because there is a great chance that they hallucinate and that's something that we are avoiding in our systems. We want the most accurate response uh, to our question. And then you are going to receive a prompt with the following format. I'm also providing the model uh, a schema of the prompt that it should expect to receive. And we are going to design our prompt, our input, exactly as it is here. So here, in op, uh, actually in terminal Q&A, what I'm going to do is exactly create what we just wrote down here. So if I keep it here, as I said, I'm, I'm first loading my uh, LLM and I'm also uh, loading the system role, the temperature, which is zero in my case. I'm passing the uh, vector database directory and I'm also uh, loading how many, uh, how many content do I want to retrieve. Then first I want to instantiate a, an instance of the Chroma vector database along with my embedding model. Then I'm going to design uh, this Q&A step by step as we uh, wrote down here. So first is I'm going to get, actually this is a clean, okay, so this is a, a second function that I'm going to use, but I will explain uh, while I'm building the process here. So first I'm going to get the user's query, which is, uh, I'm just simply asking the user to ask a question in the terminal. This is going to be the user's query, and I'm going to uh, prepare it as I explained to my language model. Then I'm going to perform a vector search, a similarity search, using my question on my database. Again, if you want to design your own RAG system, a customized version, you probably need to implement a few more steps here, but this is how uh, things are simplified if you use LangChain. And for that, I'm going to use similarity search. Then I'm going to retrieve some documents, but before I pass the documents to my language model, I'm going to clean up the documents a little bit. So depending on, based on my experience, actually, I uh, think some documents might not be as clean as the other ones. And in my case, the documents that I'm providing right now to my language model, like when I'm retrieving the documents, they are not in plain text in a way that is human readable or in a way that is readable for the language models. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking the documents, which is a list, and I'm starting to go through all the retrieved contents and I'm cleaning them. So if you check my cleaning function, you can see that I've addressed quite some techniques here, some uh, issues here. So these are the uh, special characters that I found out in my documents. And uh, these are the things that I'm cleaning up here. Actually, if your documents are clean and if you are using with more general, like if you are using the chatbot with more general documents, this is a step that you might not need. But it is uh, a good practice to print out uh, the input of the model before you're passing it to the model and make sure that everything is just uh, as it should be and it's just human readable so the model can actually understand what you're passing to it. So I'm cleaning the documents and then I'm just providing uh, the model with the 
uh, input uh, that it is expecting to receive. And I'm also printing it, so just to see how it is receiving the input. So this is exactly as we uh, defined here. Let's see how it works. So if I just execute Python source terminal Q and A, so we will see, I'm also printing the length of the vector database and right now uh, it's asking me to ask a question. So if I just simply ask, explain the architecture of the vision transformer, it is now going to look back at my documents, search the document based on my question, retrieve some content, as you can see the contents are now cleaned, and pass it to a language model and this is the response that we are receiving right now. The response is, the architecture of the vision transformer is a pure transformer applied directly to sequence of image patches. It does not rely on conventional networks, convolutional networks. So as you can see, it just provided us with an explanation of the architecture of vision transformer. And that's something that we wanted. So we just designed a pipeline that connects us to our vector database here. So this purple line is now designed. The next step is to design a Gradio app and connect that pipeline to Gradio and also be able to uh, see everything in a nice uh, user interface. For that, what I want to do is first to show you the part of the Gradio that is just for the designing purposes. So if I open up RAG GPT app, if you let me close this one. If you check this part, so from here up to this point, this is where I'm just designing my user interface. There is nothing happening uh, in this part of the code except our user interface is going to be designed, which I'm going to show you in a second. And everything that is happening in the back end is happening from here. So let's see how, we, how it looks like if we just simply design our user interface. So for showing you the user interface, I also need to import Gradio as Gradio, like as GR. Then I need UI setting to also implement the feedback. So if you open utils, you will see UI settings here. And there are two functions here, toggle sidebar and feedback. And these two functions are going to uh, just help us to design the sidebar on the left for showing the references and also giving a link to the PDF and also the feedback button. So right now I'm not using uh, the feedback button in any case, uh, like in, uh, for anything, but you definitely can use it, uh, use the feedback button to store the user's feedback and to improve your system if you are designing it for your organization. So I'm going to also execute this class here so right now, if I execute this code, and if I have demo.launch, what I'm going to see is, yes, I also uh, have assigned avatar images to the user side and also to the response. So I will just skip it for now. So this is our user interface. This is just a simple skin, a surface of uh, our interface. It is not connected to any backend. And now it's ready actually to be connected to the backend and so we can have uh, interaction with our chatbot. So let's see how it works. So if I open my app, as I said again, here up to this point is just the skin of the user interface and this is where uh, all the backend is happening. I have two main functions. One of them is the respond function and the other one is process uploaded files, depending on the functionality of the chatbot. If I go into the respond function, which is something that we, uh, we want to see how it works right now, the respond function is going to take the chatbot, which is a list of Q and A's while you are in the chat session and you are interacting with the model. So this chatbot list is going to also include your historical Q and A's. And this is something that we will use for preparing uh, the model with the chat history. 
It also received the message, the new query from the user. It receives the data type. So this is uh, what type of uh, functionality our model uh, needs to have right now. Is it going to be connected to our uh, process vector database or do we want to just upload a new uh, file or do we want to uh, ask for a summary? Then we also have a temperature. Uh, you will have a temperature setting uh, for, for this language model that we are going to use right now, but I personally will use it uh, as zero. Then I have the data type, if it's pro, uh, equal to pre-process document or if it's equal to upload doc process for rag. So what it means is if it is equal to pre-process doc, it's going to get connected to this pipeline here, to the vector database that we designed using this blue pipeline. If it is uh, equal to upload doc, uh, upload doc process for rag, it is going to uh, get connected to the vector database that we created using this pipeline. So this is how we switch between two vector databases and we can have uh, our Q&A with different documents. Then what I'm going to do is first, I'm going to uh, instantiate the vector database and uh, also I'm going to check if actually first I'm going to check if the vector database exists. If not, I'm going to ask the user to upload the vector database before uh, running the chatbot. And then I'm going to exactly do the same as we did in this module. The one that we created the interaction uh, with the chatbot in terminal, I'm going to exactly do the same here. The only difference is right now I have Gradio waiting for me to return the results to it so it can print it for us. So I get the response from the model. I also append it to my chatbot. Again, this chatbot is coming from the Gradio side. So this is uh, what Gradio is going to use for printing the user's query along with the model's response. And I also uh, have access to retrieve content because I want to print it nicely on that left sidebar. Before I show you the chatbot, there is one more element that I need to explain so we can then uh, see how, how our chatbot is now interacting with our first vector database. And that is serve.py. Since I was developing my uh, project locally, one of the challenges that I had was how I want to show you actually the documents. So there are multiple ways that you can uh, show the user the documents if you wish to do that. So if you are using a different user interface, for example, Chainlet, Chainlet is already providing you with a nice sidebar that you can uh, print your retrieved content and you can also show a document on that sidebar. In Gradio, I couldn't find that feature. So eventually what I came up with was to create my own sidebar and I designed that markdown sidebar so I can print the references and I can also uh, put a link because I couldn't show a document in it. But what I did was I included the link at the end of each reference and that link is going to point to port 8000, which is the port that I'm go uh, going to use to host all, uh, all of uh, my documents. So this is what this class is doing. This class is checking these two folders and it's going to create a port and it's going to just keep all the documents on that port. So if the user clicks on any of the references, it can see the documents live on that port that we just created. And you can also change the port from the config uh, file. Let me also do a little bit of cleanup here. So if I want to start the chatbot and start chatting with my vector database, first I need to execute serve.py. So now my documents are ready, live. We can also uh, use the reference site. And then I need to execute Python source rag GPT app. Python, I have a missing N here. So we have our user interface. We just created a function that returns that chatbot and the retrieve content to my 
uh, user interface and let's see actually how it works. So I have a few questions that I want to test for each document. Let's see if we can pick up the answer that we are looking for. So for the first document, I want to ask how do you feel without burnout while still being productive and remaining productive? This is a question that uh, I found it on the document itself. So let's ask the question. This is the answer to our question. It was successfully uh, picked up the answer from the document from the retrieved contents and it is also showing us uh, the reference that we just uh, we just uh, asked a question from. Actually, if I try to find that question, I think here it is. How do you deal with burnout while still being productive and remaining productive? So this is the question that I just asked and our search uh, result was successfully pointing to the right document and our model was able to pick up the answer from the document. The answer is dealing uh, is to acknowledge that it sucks and it keep going, unlike students who can accept lower. So actually if, yes, that it sucks and you keep going and unlike the students, this is the exact answer that we are looking for. Let's ask another question from the vision transformer. So I'm asking the model to explain the vision transformer architecture. And this is the explanation of the model. We saw it earlier in this video. This is just uh, a nice explanation of the vision transformer model. Uh, it is based on transformer arch architecture. That's, I think that's actually what they uh, originally said in the, in the PDF file, so, which is commonly used in NLP tasks. VIT applies the transformer directly to sequences of image patches, etc. So this is perfect answer again to our user's question. Let's ask a more detailed question, like how does Vision Transformer interpret images? Vision Transformer interpret images by applying self-attention to sequence of image patches. And actually, if you look at the, the description in the PDF file, you will see exactly that's how they are explaining it. If I open up here, so there are three uh, big chunk of documents that was retrieved based on my question, but the model was able to pick up the answer again uh, from these uh, three chunks and provide us with the precise answer to our question. And also again, if I view the PDF file, I can see my vision transformer PDF here. Let's ask a question about the clip model. So what I want is the model to explain the architecture of the clip. So the architecture of the clip model is not mentioned it's re in the retrieved content. However, based on the information provided in chat history, clip stands for this one. That's interesting, right? So the model was not able to pick up the answer from uh, the retrieved content, which is something that I expect, especially when I'm dealing with GPT 3.5. So the, the amount of information that we are passing to the model, actually, probably it's a good time for me to show you the input of our language model. If I check the input of our language model, I have a chat history which contains the previous two Q and A's. I have three chunks that I'm retrieving for the chatbot and I'm also uh, giving it my uh, new question. So as you can see, this is a huge amount of information. I mean, it, the chatbot is still able to pick up the answer in like most of the cases, most of the scenarios, but sometimes it gets a little bit confused. This is an issue that I almost never had with uh, GPT-4, especially if your documents are clean and if your chunks actually contain the answer that you are looking for, GPT-4 is very much more powerful than GPT-3.5. However, uh, I just wanted to take this chance to also uh, show you the input of our model. This is exactly how we uh, we, we told the model that we are going to process the input and we are going to pass it to it. So right now what it's saying is CLIP stands for uh, Contrastive Language Image Pre-Training. It's a model that combines natural language processing and computer vision to perform image classification tasks. CLIP uses the vision transformer architecture which applies self-attention to say, oh, this is amazing. Like actually it was able to provide me with the answer, with the correct answer. So this is just fantastic. It was a little bit confused, but eventually it was able to pick up the answer. And if I 
uh, open up the PDF, we can see that all our PDFs are now pointing to the clip paper. And this is how we can design a rack system to talk to our documents. Let me ask one more question, a more detailed question. How does clip model process image and text? The clip model processes both image and text by using a combination of NLP and computer vision techniques. Uh, it lever leverages vision transformer, which applies self-attention. Uh, this allows the model to interpret images by analyzing their internal representation, such as learned embedding filters and position embeddings. So this is fantastic, right? So we just was able to point our chatbot to the vector database that we created earlier and I start asking questions based on um, the documents that we had. The thing is, as you saw, the choice of language model, embedding model, uh, LLM instruction, the way that you prepare your input and uh, the language models prompt, everything, like how clear your question is, these are all very important factors that you have to consider when you are designing a RAG system. You have to start playing around with it. Actually, just by designing this project, I understood a lot more about how effective is massaging the language models input prompts and how, how effective was changing the chunk size and the chunk overlap. All these uh, configs are playing a, a very important role in the performance of the system. So I strongly recommend you to start playing around, use different uh, GPT models, use different uh, configs for data preparation, different documents. You can use different type of documents to see how it performs on different, uh, like different in different domains. These are all the things that uh, eventually you have to test in order to be able to design a nice uh, functional uh, chatbot. So let's jump to the next step. So what we did up to this point is we created our pipeline and we created a vector database. Then we, I also showed you the same pipeline, uh, how it works if we upload a document. And we just had a Q&A with the three documents that we processed and we uh, kept in our vector database. So the second step is let's upload a document and see how it performs if I upload the document. So if I upload the document, right now let's just upload a document which is not a technical paper. It says if you would like to upload a PDF, okay, yes, of course, I have to change the models, uh, the chatbot's functionality. So right now I want to process my document for RAG. If I upload the document, it's going to be processed and a new vector database is going to be created on the uh, data folder. So if I open vector database, now I see this uploaded folder was added and it contains a vector database that contains the vector, uh, the embedding and the text from my new PDF file. So in my PDF file, there are three stories, uh, three fictional stories to three fictional characters. One of them is a bee, one of them is a wolf, and one of them is a red fish. So let's say, uh, tell me more about the red fish. The red fish in the story is named Fred. He is described as not just an ordinary fish, but one with scales that sparkle like it just was able to pick up the story and it's a start to uh, walk through the story and give me everything about Fred. One day Fred and Delphi stumble upon a map that points to a hidden treasure located in a distant part of the ocean. That's amazing, right? So again, it was able to pick up uh, the answer from the document that we just uploaded uh, while we were chatting with the chatbot. And these are the two ways that you can create your rack system. However, there is now one last piece in our project, which is summarizing the whole document. So this is something that I explained earlier. I also explained two challenges that you will face if you want to uh, expand this part and if you want to improve it, if you want to use larger documents. But let's see how uh, it works and how I designed it for this project. 
So let's close it here. So if you open Summarizer here, actually let me first start from here. So if you uh, come to this part, you will see that I'm taking in the dropdown the functionality that the user is requesting for. So it is either pre-processed doc or it is upload doc process for rag or it is upload doc give full summary. So this is what we are going to implement here. And this rag with dropdown is going to be passed to both my uh, processed files and also to the respond file, uh, to, uh, to the respond function. So if I uh, go into process uploaded files, what I see here is I'm using rag with dropdown to define, so I'm going to upload a document and that uploaded document might be used for process, uh, processing, uh, processing for rag or it, want, uh, it might be used for the summarization. So here is what I am checking based on the user selection. If the user was selected, process it for rag, I'm going to process it for rag. If the user was selected, upload the document for and uh, give a full summary, I'm going to provide a full summary of the document. So again, when the user press the upload button, what I'm going to receive is a directory to that document. But there are a few more things that I'm going to pass to my function to get the summary. I will explain uh, here. So this is the summarizer class that we are going to use for that purpose. But before that, let me explain to you what is happening. So when the user presses the upload button, what I'm going to get is the directory of the document that the user wants to summarize. Then I'm going to load the document and I'm going to load it in a list. And that list is going to contain each page of the document. So it's going to have page one, it's going to have page two, and until the last page. Then what I'm going to do is, I'm going to pass each page to a GPT model and ask for summarization. So I'm going to create a for loop in which I'm going to pass each page to a language model. And in return, I'm going to get a summary of that page. So here, eventually, what I will have is another list. But now instead of page one, page two, until the last page, I'm going to have summary of page one, summary of page two, until the summary of the last page. So summary of page one, summary of page two, etc. Then what I want to do is to pass this list, this new list to another GPT model. So now the new GPT model is going to provide me with the summary from the summaries that it received. So I'm going to pass, that pass the second list to a large language model. And what I'm going to get at the end is a summary of all the summaries. This is what I'm going to do for that class. However, I just added two uh, layers of, let's say, uh, security, two things just to make sure that uh, my class is not going to throw an error. The first one is, while I want to create the first summary from my pages, what I'm going to do is, I know that GPT model or my language model has a context limit. So I know there is a context limit. And I know I have X number of pages in my PDF file. So what I'm going to do is to ask the model to use the context limit that I'm passing to it. For example, here I am using 3000 as the, like the maximum context limit that I want to get at the end. So if I divide it by the summary of each page, what I'm going to do is to tell the model that summarize each page but your maximum token limit is the result of this uh, division. So this is going to be included in the LLM summary. And if you can see it here, 
I'm, say, I'm telling the second model that you are an expert text summarizer. You will receive a text and your task is to summarize and keep all the key, key information. Keep the maximum length of a summary within a range that I'm going to define based on this value. You, you can, take, uh, uh, you can uh, change it based on the language model that you are using. And here I will make sure that the second model that I'm going to use here is not going to receive a context length that is, uh, that is more than uh, the permitted length. So that's one thing that I just want to make sure. And the last thing is just to make it a little bit more safe, I'm going to add a threshold. So you have two options here to play with. Uh, the first is maximum token limit and there is a token threshold. So since I know that actually this maximum token limit right now is sufficient, it's not going to hit the limits, especially with the documents that I personally use, my, my token threshold is zero, but that token threshold is going to be subtracted from the result of this division just to make it a little bit safer so you can have a limit which is not exactly on the edge, so the model is never going to hit that limit. However, this is not the main challenge that you are dealing with if you are going to pass a large PDF file. So make sure to, uh, to handle, uh, uh, to change the code so it can handle those scenarios. So let me show you the summarizer here. As I said, I'm going to get a file directory, which is the file directory for the PDF file that the user just requested. I have the maximum final token, which is this one here, it is 3000. So I'm going to divide that 3000 by the length of the document and I'm going to ask the uh, language model that you know what, when you are summarizing each page, you shouldn't uh, surpass that limit. I have a token threshold, threshold, I'm going to subtract it here from that division just to stay on the safe side. I have the GPT model, the temperature is going to be zero. LLM uh, system role, I have the second system role for my second model. So if you remember, I have two language models. The first one is uh, for summarizing each page and we just, uh, I just show you how we want to also pass it the maximum token limit for each summarization. And I have a second GPT model that I necessarily don't need to suppress that model and ask it, you have to stay within this limit. Actually, what I need is a comprehensive summary of that document. So I need uh, as much key information as uh, it can possibly uh, provide for me. So the second GPT model is going to have a different system role, which is you are an expert text summarizer, uh, you receive a text and your task is to give a comprehensive summary and keep all the key information. This is how I'm going to uh, ask the second GPT model to behave for me. And finally, I have the character overlap. So this is something that I forgot to tell you. So one thing that I want to do is to pass each page to the first GPT model so it can summarize it for me. But what I'm going to do here, actually I will call it 2.5. When I want to pass my page one, let's say my page two, to the GPT model. What I also want to include is a little bit of uh, like the ending part of the page one. So the model can have a better understanding and can have a better understanding with the connection uh, with the previous page, especially if a sentence was missed, if a sentence was not finished properly, etc. So again, this is not something that uh, you would say it's, it can, it's the best practice. It can solve all my problems. Actually, you might want to use LangChain chunking system or you, want, you might want to design your own summarizer based on uh, the way that you want. You might want to actually as well uh, input the chat history so the model knows what is summarized earlier. These are all the techniques that you want uh, you may want to actually implement. But what I want to do is if I have page two, I will also add ending part of page one to that page two so the model sees a little bit from the previous page as well. So that's what this character overlap means. And by character overlap, I'm just including the last 100 character 
uh, to my uh, page. And also I'm adding a little bit from the next page. So you can think of this as a both, uh, like a both way overlap. It's going to have some overlap with the previous page and it's also going to have some overlap with the next page. So what I have here is I'm checking if I'm in, on the first page, I don't do anything except adding uh, a little bit from the second page. If I'm on any page except the first and the last, I'm going to add uh, that character overlap from the previous page and the next page. And if I'm on the last page, what I'm going to add is just a little bit from the previous page. So this is just some, somehow again, how I, uh, you know, I designed it to, to make it a little bit uh, more understandable for the model and it doesn't miss any sentences or it doesn't see any half sentences without understanding what it was about. Then what I do is I just go through all the documents, create this input and pass it to my model and create a long text from all the outputs and keep it, uh, keep it for my second model. Finally, what I'm going to pass to my second model is a full summary, which was created from the first model. And I'm going to pass it to my second model to get the final summary. So the way that I'm creating this full summary is actually not a list, but you can have a list if you want to process it further. What I wanted to do was simply have a list, like have, have a string that contains all my summaries so I can pass it to the second model and get the final summary. So this is what this summary, uh, summarizer class does. And the function that you see here is just simply a function for uh, sending the API call, API call for the GPT model and uh, receiving the response from it. So now you have a good understanding of how this system works and how I designed this system. So let's see it actually in action. So again, I will pass two documents. The first one, let's pass it the stories that I just mentioned. Before that, I have to also change so there are three stories in this document and what I want to see is three summarization from all the stories because I don't want to miss any information. And here we go. I have the first story about Amarok and a lone wolf. I have the second story which is about Fred a small fish. And finally I have the third story about Lily a young bee. So the model went through three pages of a document. It realized that there are three different stories so you have to get the user a piece of each one and it gave me a very short summary of each story in the response. Let's pass the paper attention is all you need. So this is a 15 page PDF if I remember correctly. What I want to see is a piece from the beginning till the end. Is an introduction, a nice introduction, the body of the paper, like what they accomplished, and eventually some conclusion or some sort of a discussion at the end of the page. And this is actually what the model is going to provide us. So the paper introduces a new network architecture called Transformer. It is started from the very like first step of the paper, the introduction part. It achieves these scores, which so the model was actually able to pick up the results. The model also generalizes well to other tasks such as English constituency parsing. The paper discusses the architecture of the Transformer model, including stacked self-attention and fully connected layers. The paper discusses the performance of different variations of transformer architecture. The results show that transform model achieves the state of the art performance. And finally, let's say what it says at the end, the code used for the training and evaluation is available on GitHub. The paper also includes a list of references. So our summarizers was able to go through all the pages of this paper and provide us with a short, nice summary of the whole paper. It also provided us with some of the key results, which is fantastic. And we have our summarizer in the chatbot. So we just saw actually how to design all these pieces and make it a chatbot in Gradio a user interface and start to uh, talk to our vector databases, to chat with our personal documents, to upload the document, while we are working with a chat doc, a chat, a chatbot and chat with it, and eventually how to pass a document and get the summary from the whole document. Here, I just want to wrap this video up by uh, just mentioning some of the important parts that you have to consider in your project. So as I said, model selection, 
both the language models and the embedding model is very important. Language model instruction is super important how you instruct your language model. LLM configs, temperature, token limits, etc. all the configs that I showed you in the YAML file. The context length uh, for the LLM instruction, the query, retrieve content, and the chat history is something that you want to uh, keep a close uh, eye on it because it's very important. So if you are planning to design a system for a large number of users, this is very important to keep uh, an eye on along with the number of API calls that you can have per minute. Selection slash designing the rag technique. Which rag technique do you want to use? I mentioned three different rag techniques. We just implemented the basic one. However, we just saw that how powerful this basic rag technique is. But anyway, if you want to design your own system, you might want to consider different techniques and uh, see which one works best for you. Eventually, chunk size and overlap. If you go with the basic rag, child and parent size. Parent size if you go with the auto merging uh, rag and sentence window size if you go uh, with the sentence retrieval rag. These are the configs that you want to keep in mind and you want to start playing around and see uh, which one provides you with the best performance. In the last slide, I just want to mention some of the deployment considerations in case you are planning to design a rag system for your organization. So one of the things that you have to keep in mind is uh, the memory and privacy. So probably you would want to have a memory both to keep the record of your model's response along with probably users' queries, also users' feedbacks. These are the information that together they can help you to improve your system. However, uh, the users' queries and the model's response probably are some of the sensitive contents that you would want to encrypt those uh, information and you just want to pull them out in case something happens. But the user feedback by itself is going to be very beneficial for you to improve your system over time then you want to have a database and data, data flow management uh, process uh, in the system. Let's say if you have 2000 documents and you want to add one document to your vector database. The last thing that we want is to create a vector database from scratch. But what we want instead is to have a data flow management in place that can actually just add that one document or let's say remove that specific document from the vector database. So this is a very important thing if you just want to uh, have a better uh, pipeline and database management. Then is testing. So testing is another important part of your system. You have to do a lot of tests just to make sure that your rag system is performing as expected and it is suitable for your uh, tasks. Then is security. Uh, so let's say data leakage and authentication are two examples uh, under the security domain. So you just want to make sure that uh, the documents that are being put and they are uh, being processed uh, to be uh, added to the vector database, they, are, they both have accurate content in them. And also they will be uh, like the employees who have access to those documents have the authorization to access to those documents. So these are two of the things that you have to keep in mind. The next uh, thing is a special cases and a special scenarios. So if you have two types of documents, let's say a general document that is easy to digest and is easy to understand, and a RAG system can do very good on those documents, and you also have very technical documents for your organization. So a RAG system might not be as good uh, with those technical documents as it is with general documents. So you might probably have to come up with different solutions to address uh, those special cases and special scenarios, probably fine tuning a language model or some other solutions. Then you of course need a deployment pipeline for both data ingestion and the chatbot. You have to consider latency scale, computational power, server price, these type of things that belong to the, let's say designing the infrastructure of uh, your project. These are very important aspects of your project. It is important how you want to deploy your model and where you want to deploy your model. If you want to use cloud or if you have to use, uh, if you want to deploy it on-prem, these are different, different things that you have to keep in mind. Monitoring and logging are very important. You just want to keep observing your project as you move on. And feedback, I just mentioned it uh, next to memory and privacy. So these are some of the key uh, aspects if you want to uh, deploy a chatbot uh, and uh, design it for uh, to be accessed by uh, a large number of users. And uh, that was it for this video. I hope now you have a good understanding of how RAG systems work and now you can actually design your own RAG uh, chatbot. 
And in the next video, what I'm going to do is to design a chatbot with a Streamlit. And the chatbot, uh, the chatbot feature is it is able to decide whether to provide the user with an answer from its own knowledge, or does it? Uh, it, it can also search the web and provide the user with an answer uh, based on uh, the search results on the web. We are going to make it happen by leveraging uh, a feature in language models called function calling. And it's going to be a very interesting project. I hope to see you in the next video.